So hi and welcome back. This time we will be working on a different uh, problem, okay, different scenario. This time this has something to do about Atwood's machine. So this is an Atwood machine. So an Atwood machine is a pulley, okay. So if you have a pulley, connect, and then you have a string over the pulley, and then you have two masses connected from each side of the pulley. Now, different condition, of course. Uh, we're gonna go over it today. But the most important thing for this kind of problem, always remember, okay, assume, here's the major assumption that you must consider. If it's not indicated, please, okay, there are some things that you must remember about this setup. The mass of the pulley, so let me just write it here, Atwood's machine problems. Atwood's machine. First thing that you must consider, let me just zoom it in so you can see. So for Atwood's machine, Atwood's machine, first thing that we must consider, mass of the pulley and string is negligible. So it should be negligible. So you don't have to consider the mass of the pulley. If you consider the mass of the pulley and the mass of the, st of the string, then we have to apply another concept in physics. But for this topic only, if it's not mentioned, always make the assumption, write it in your solution, that the mass of the pulley and the string is negligible. Second, there's no slippage. Okay, there's no slippage along the pulley, between the pulley and the string, no slippage. S slip, slippage, okay, zero. It's equivalent to zero, no slippage. Uh, last but not least, okay, no deformation on the string, stretched does not stretch no str not stretched okay so it means the string is not stretched if the string is stretched then that's a different story okay so there will be a different effect on this now so for the acceleration of the block of block a block b if the mass of a is equal to the mass of b okay so think about it what will happen if the mass of A and N mass of B, okay? So what I'm gonna do is to make some assumptions. Okay, so let me just write down. Let me use the red one. Assume or let M equals the mass of of A. Okay, so, and B, so let's just call this one, the mass over here is the same as the mass on this side, okay, mass of A and B, because they are equal, okay, they are equal. So you're going to say, will it move? Will it move? Okay. Will it move? Okay, so now let's see. Will it move if M equals M? So there's two over here. They're equal. So they're equal mass M and M. Some students get confused when they use subscript. That's why I'm not suggesting use subscript. Sometimes you put M sub A, M sub B. Sometimes it's too much of a confusion. So why don't you write it down here as you're set when you're writing your solution to what those letters represent. So uh, free body diagram again. So let's start with free body diagram. But this time there are two free body diagrams that you have to consider. Okay, so free body diagram, FBD. So this time you have two systems. 
the first system that we have is system A, the first block, and then the second block, B. So you have those dots right here. So what I'm going to do is to draw two dots. This represents for letter A, and this represents for block letter B, A and B. Okay. Hey. So what are the two forces acting on block A? So we have the force of gravity along A, which is equivalent to mass. We don't have to write it down like that. Okay, so no equation yet. Just put FGA. I'll take my, I get too excited. That's part of the solution. Now, you have a force of tension. So this is your force of tension. On the other side, the same thing is that you have the mass of object B and then you have the tension on the other side. Okay, so force of tension. So what do we know about this force of tension? This force of tension is the same. Okay. So this is the same because the same force, the same tension, or the same string that is connected to the other string, you produce the same amount of force. Okay, So the tension, the tension between that string is the same as well. Now, how about our force of gravity? Okay, so force of gravity is mass times g. Okay, so let me just use a different color pen. Use the green one. We all know that F of G is mass times G. So mass times G. So now we can further analyze that force of gravity for A and force of gravity along B is the same as mass, but we're using the same mass. And then the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so M and G. So technically, you have the same amount of force pulling it downward. And when you have the same amount of force pulling it downward, or for, same amount of force acting on a system, and this is the system on the string, it means that you have a balance force. And balance force will not move, will not change any uh, state of motion. Without any change in state of motion, it means that the acceleration is zero. So the acceleration is zero so let's take a look at what we're going to be doing so if i have summation of forces so let's analyze here for for, for object a the summation of forces along a are as follows we have positive Ft minus F of GA. And that will give us Ft minus M and G. So this will be the summation of forces acting along A. So this is your net force. So the net force right here is as follows okay so you have the net force letter b let's do the same thing for object letter b you have the summation of forces along or within object b so you have force of tension minus f of g on object b so if you notice if we place this, we have Ft minus M and G. And this is the summation of forces along B. So the net force is the same. Since the net force is the same, the acceleration is considered a zero. Okay, so the same, the same net force, the same forces acting on each side of the system. So we will have what we call acceleration that is zero. 
a is zero because the forces acting on the system is balance. So there's no presence of unbalanced force, so therefore the acceleration is zero. Simple, hope you understand it. See you with the next problem.